Welcome to Juniper Learning Bytes. My name is Zach Gibbs and I am a content developer in the Education Services Department. And today we'll be discussing NTP in a chassis cluster. So let's discuss NTP in a cluster. Okay, what we want to do is we want to ensure that the system clocks of both nodes in a chassis cluster are synchronized. This is very important for time-sensitive items such as real-time objects or RTOs, licenses, software updates, node failovers, syslogs, as well as other time-sensitive items. However, the secondary node for redundancy group 0 or RG0 does not run the routing protocol daemon or RPD. This means that it cannot reach the NTP server without some help. And you can provide that help by using the backup router statement and we'll take a closer look at that here in a minute when we jump to the CLI. All right, now that we're in the CLI of a chassis cluster, let's examine the current cluster status. For redundancy group zero, and as you can see, node zero is primary for redundancy group 0 and node 1 is secondary for redundancy group 0. Let's take a look at the system clocks for both nodes. And as you can see the current time which is today is set to 2012 11 so uh, 2012 November 2nd. However the system clock for node 1 is set for January 1st of 2012. This is not good. We want to change this. We want to sync those clocks and we want to make sure they stay synced. So first let's try to set, try to sync with the NTP server. As you can see it works for node 0 no problem. However, node 1 can't reach the NTP servers gives us the message of no uh, server suitable for synchronization found. It can't get there. So let's let's jump to node uh, node one. Take a closer look at that. Look at the route for the NTP server that's found at the 10.10.10.253 address. And as you can see, the routing subsystem is not running. We knew this. We knew that RP, um, yeah, RPD is not running on node one. So let's see what happens if we try to reach the NTP server, which is configured to respond to pings from node 1. It doesn't look so well. But as we discussed, we know how to fix this problem. We need to set a backup router for node 1 and point it towards node 0. Jump into configuration mode. And as you probably already know, we can set different configurations for the nodes using groups and then applying those groups. These two groups, node 0 and node 1, are currently applied. So let's jump into the group for node 1 and configure a backup router. And we're going to set this address to the uh, FXP0 interface address of node 0 that we can see above. And we're going to set the destination of the NTP server. Take a look at our current configuration. Make sure it's correct. And with looking at this configuration, you may ask yourself, why not set a destination of a default route? So our 0 slash 0, so all networks and all hosts. And you could do that. However, it is recommended that you do not do that because this can cause cluster instability between the two nodes. Uh, the two nodes have to communicate over uh, the fabric link and the control link and this can cause interruptions. Setting that to a default route for the destination can cause interruptions with those communications. So we would recommend that you only set specific routes with the destination option. In that regards though you can actually set a network. You could set a slash 24 network or even a slash 16 network. 
it's all up to you, but we just recommend that you do not use a default route here. All right, so since we have set that backup router statement, we told node one to use node zero to reach the NTV server, let's commit the configuration and uh, see what happens afterwards. All right, now that that com commit is complete, let's jump to the secondary node to see what effects that had. Examining the routing table, we'll find that RPD is still not running. That's okay, we expected that. However, let's try to reach the NTP server address. And the good news is the NTP server address is now reachable. And so this means we should be able to synchronize with the NTP server from node 1. All right, let's jump back to uh, the primary node, node, node 0. And let's set the NTP, or let's try to set the date via NTP again. As you can see, it works for both nodes. That offsets a little, little, little high. So let's just do it again. That should fix the problem. And the offset for the for node one is much better. And we can see that both nodes are synchronizing with the NTP server. So as a final test, let's actually look at the system clocks to see if they have actually synchronized. All right, so now we can see that both of the system times for both nodes have synced. They are exactly the same down to the segment with node zero. There's the output for node zero for the current time. And here is the output for node one for the current time. They are the same down to the very second. This is exactly what we want. We want those, those system clocks to be synchronized and now they are. So in summary, we discussed keeping the NTP service synchronized on both nodes, both nodes in a chassis cluster. We talked about how RPD, the routing protocol daemon, is not running on the secondary node for redundancy group zero. And we talked about how to use the backup router statement to facilitate communication from node one to the NTP server through going uh, through uh, node zero. Uh, this reduces failover complications and also ensures proper syslogging. And so that brings us to the end of the NTP and a chassis cluster learning bite. And I hope what you learned today will be useful for you in administrating chassis clusters. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses, learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths, Juniper Networks certification program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence, and the training community. From forums to social media, join the discussion.